So today I'm working on these blades. I have four of these raised clip harpoon style buoys that I'm working on for a customer and it's time to put the guards on or start cutting the guards to fit them in. I've already hand sanded these up to about 600 I think and got the clips done and she's ready for guards and handles and all that good stuff. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. I'm starting out with some stainless, 416 stainless. I've got some marks here, center marks, and I'll be marking my Ricasso to know where to cut my slot. Now what I like to do is on the back side of the guard is I drill a bigger hole and I drill it down to leaving about 50 or 60 thousandths on the front side of the guard where it'll be fitting up. Then what I do is I take it, flip it in the vise, and I mill it out. Now these blades are around 532nd. By the time I surface ground them after forging them, they're around 532nd. So what I'll be doing is the back side I'll be drilling with a 3 16th bit, and then the front side I will mill with a 1 8th bit and equally remove material on each side of the slot to fit that tang up to the shoulder. Now I'll leave a little room, a couple thousandths, maybe five thousandths, to hammer it on the rest of the way and do a little filing to fit it up. Now I'll be using a glorified drill press, my benchtop mill over here, to do this. But you can do this with a drill press and then file it out. It just takes longer, but you have to set stops and that sort of thing to keep from over cutting your holes. But since I have a mill, that's what I'm gonna use. So we'll get started doing that and I'll show you my setup in the mill vise. But before I start drilling the backside of those guards, I need to sharpen this bit. Something that bladesmiths need to know how to do, knife makers. Something my dad taught me when I was a young fellow in the shop with him. And one of the things he always used was something like this. He actually made this. When you put these two nuts together, you have a 135 degree angle here, which is what I want on the end of these bits. But I'm going to be using a disc sander to do this. You can use a bench grinder, whatever. It's much easier on a bench grinder. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a sharpening and we'll get started. Now there's several ways to do this. Uh, you can use a jig. They, there's tools you can buy that slip these in and it's dead on. And I suggest if you do a lot of that, get one. I don't have one, but if I had one, I'd use it. But I've done it enough like this that I get by. Now you can come in here and roll it. You can put a back chamfer on it. There's all kinds of things you can do here on a bit to get a different style, cutting point, that sort of thing. This is how I'm gonna do it. I need to change the capacitor on my motor here. So I have to give it a old style start. You can see I'm kind of rolling it back. That looks pretty good. It's good and sharp. We're ready to go. It's all it takes. So I've got my guard set up in here with the back side up. I'm gonna be using a 3 16th bit to cut it out, like I said, down to leaving about 60 thousandths. And I want it wider on the backside because I don't need this whole width of this guard to fit up. It's easier to fit it up with just that little amount and it's plenty of holding power. But what I've done here, I'm not gonna be using my DRO for this part of the process. I just have my bit set up in there with a stop. I've got my stop set up here on the mill and it will stop right there leaving me about 60 thousandths and once I get the stop done I will change this out to a 3 16th mill and so I can bottom cut that slot flip it over put in a 1 8th mill then cut the slot and I will take equal parts on each side to make it fit I will have to measure the tang to know that and there's a little math involved and I'll show you that all right so I've got my table locked in the x-axis i believe it's called and i've also got my lines marked for the width of my ricasso now this is you know down to the tang so i want this to be a tight fit but on the back side i'm gonna cut it slightly further each side of the line so i have room when i flip it 
that I'm not running into those shoulders on the backside of where this bit made the cuts. Now I'll cut three holes here and mill it out. Okay, I've got it flipped over in here. And some of you may ask, why didn't you just drill it through the backside and mill it or mill it through the backside with your 1 8 mill? Well, I can't see these lines here where it butts up to the shoulders of the Ricasso. I want to be able to see those and uh, I don't want to overcut it. I have done it the other way, but I found this works better for me. If your mill is trammed and square and this piece is square, you won't have any problems doing it that way. All right, we got our 1 8 mill in. I'm gonna go ahead and slot it all the way through. Then we'll cut each side to fit the tang and I'll show you the math for doing that. So the slot is all the way through and now I need to cut each side of the slot to make it fit to tang. But I wanted to mention one other reason why I like to flip this guard. If I mill it with the 1 8 bit from the back side out the front, I have to get very deep here and also risk flexing that end mill because I'm right out on the end cutting that final slot. If I flip it over, I'm cutting more along the middle of the end mill. I feel I get a better square cut and I don't have that flex. And of course I can see it and I don't risk breaking an end mill by flexing it so bad. So let's do the math, figure out how much we need to take off each side. So this is gonna be a press fit guard. I won't be cutting a chamfer back here for the guard to rest up against. So I want a very tight fit here. It'll be hammered on most of the way after it gets about one eighth from this shoulder. First thing I wanna do is measure what my tang is there. 0 0.162, 0 0.162 is our target. I'm gonna be using a 1 8 end mill, 0 0.162 minus 0 0.125 equals 0 0.037. And since we're taking off of each side, we're gonna divide that by two. 0 0.0185 off of each side. Not a whole lot. We'll get set up in the mill. I'll set the XDRO and we'll move each side. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is set the zero on the X axis. All right, we're zeroed out. Now we can move back and forth and we know where we're at. So now I'm just gonna take a carbide face file guide and I'm gonna square up these shoulders a little bit so they won't be hitting. I've got it just a little proud there so I can clean up where the end mill cut. All right, let's see where we're at. So right now I'm probably a little over a thousandths to get that the rest of the way up against the shoulders. I can probably get it on there with a guard jack and I may do that and then we'll heat it up to about 500 degrees and hammer it the rest of the way on. We want to leave some impressions where the tang hits the guard where it looks like it kind of grows out of there. But you get the idea. Went ahead and cut some shoulders there where to fit up against the cut shoulders. All right, so I'll put the guard jack on it. Took a little bit, but got it all the way up against the shoulders. Once I hammer it on, any little imperfections there should go away, but we got a real good tight fit. I'm happy with that. And once I clean the face of this guard, get the little burrs or whatever they're showing, that'll all go away. Now, the way I like to do a hot fit is not the traditional hot fit where you heat it up cherry, red. I'm just going to heat this up to about 500 degrees. It's 416 stainless, and that'll make it soft enough that it'll leave a good impression in here, but it's not too soft that you will roll the edges of your guard slot. You don't want to fold them in and have rounded edges there. It'll look like a gap 
have a bad shadow there. I like to start out with wrapping a couple wraps of paper towel, and then I take painter's tape and wrap it over that up to this plunge line area. Then I'm gonna take a piece of leather. This is just some nine ounce leather, and I'm gonna bite it in my vise right here where it'll bump up against the plunge lines because I'm gonna be hammering this guard on there. This does a good job of holding it and you can get down on it pretty good with your vise. So let's put it on there. All right, so I'm gonna heat the guard up out here to a very dark gold, maybe running into the purplish color. Then I'll slide it on and take this tool here that I've made that'll fit up against it and hammer it on. I'll have a little backer here so I don't damage my guard. Keeps everything flat. I don't put some kind of indention into it with this. But 416 works real well for this. Damascus is a little different, but I do I do it the same way. I get it maybe a little hotter for Damascus guards. All right, that ought to be pretty good. We're gonna put it back in the guard jack, see what it looks like. It's, it's gonna to be too tight to put on and off by hand with a press fit like this. All right, that's a whole lot better. And what I'll do next is I'll take it over to my microscope and I will cut into those impressions with a burr. And I learned to do that from Kyle Royer, watching him do that. You can use a mill to cut some of it and then go to the burr, but I just go to the burr. I mean, you can't see no light in there. It's hard to see it, but there's a, just a little bit of shadow there. I don't like that. I'll take it to the burr, which I would do anyway, and finish that up. There we go. So you can see our impression there, but that burr will clean that up. So what I want to do is cut down where I know the guard needs to set down a little more and where I may have a high spot. So I'm going to go in there and work those grooves with a micro burr. I'm going to be running about 20,000 RPM. I just use the cheap burrs from Harbor Freight. I find that when I get the expensive ones, I break them just as easily. I'm also using a tool I just got recently. It's a battery operated. I normally use a flex shaft grinder, but I'm going to be using the battery one for this operation. So I've got the guard jack pushed up against it and looking pretty good. Once I clean the face of this guard and do the sculpting and all, I can make some minor adjustments, but overall it looks pretty good. So I have to do that to the next four. That's what these blades look like. Got oil all over them, but they all came out pretty good. And I've got to grind some swamp spikes and a couple drop points and do some forging on some mosaic Damascus. But I hope you got something out of this today. Appreciate your support. I want to thank my patrons and thank you for watching.